good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this bovine webinar. This webinar will be focusing on auto feed. Um, uh, first of all, I'd like to apologise just for a slightly late start to this webinar, um, and also apologise as um, Case is unfortunately uh, not been able to join us this afternoon. So um, I will just be running through a very short uh, welcome uh, to the webinar and to bovine. So bovine focuses on understanding the challenges that are facing the European beef sector. It focuses on the appreciation of the role of demand driven innovations and is sharing that knowledge between researchers and stakeholders. It has a great understanding of the value of the multi actor approach and is working with pre existing relationships with the actors in the beef sector. And really the principles of bovine is the fact that it is a European innovation network and it has both regional and national networks uh, within that to support this flow of innovation. We have committed partners, advisors, communicators and practitioners working within the project to support this bottom up approach, which is responding to the needs which have been expressed by European farmers, which are gathered at the national and regional network events. It focuses on European and national policy engagement to help with the sustainability of the beef sector. Bovine is also a multi-actor network, um, and this is throughout the project, ensuring that we have actors of all levels um, and all stakeholders to help uh, push the, the project forward. And obviously communication and dissemination is a key tool to be able to engage with the whole network. The project has 18 partners from nine different countries across Europe, and this is a three year project. And Bovine is really working to be an influential network. And you can see here uh, just a quick slide about the past partners involved, the committed media partners, as well as the advisory groups that are, are working to support Bovine. So now I'd like to pass over to our presenters for today's uh, webinar. And this is webinar is focusing on automatic feeding systems, so auto feed. So our first uh, presenter of the, the session is uh, Massimo, and I will pass over to him now. Good evening, everyone. My name is Massimo. I am a researcher of uh, the Agricultural Research Center for Economics and uh, the Research Center for Engineering and Agricultural Processing. I am um, about to, to introduce to you to the available technologies that uh, currently are available for the automa uh, automatic administering of the total mixed duration in a cattle breeding operations. This work, uh, as uh, Marie mentioned, is part of the AutoFit project, which started on the 1st September 2019 and funded by the Lombardy region of the north of Italy here. And uh, the aim of the project is the evaluation of the use of the automatic feeding system and the parts of the automatic system for rationing and rational management operation. However, auto feed can be considered also a farm management project because it aims also uh, uh, through the improvement and the application of automatic feeding systems, it aims uh, at improving the welfare of the ring and beef cattle so that uh, there is a subsequent improvement in product quality and sustainability. The partnership uh, is made of the uh, our, our Center, which uh, we are the principal investigators, in partnership with the, the CRPA Studies and Research Foundation, and five dairy and beef, beef and, fat, and cattle farms, which uh, have uh, different automatic devices for animal feeding. And our work is helped by our subcontractors, the University of Milan, Lombardo Zootechnic and Panoramic. All the news about the project may be retrieved through the project website, and from it, all the information goes to the social pages on both LinkedIn and Facebook. When we speak about nutrition, as a matter of fact, we are speaking about one of the cornerstones of cattle breeding because in addition to directly influencing the quality of the production, it also strongly affects the farm activities and the workload. However, when we are in, uh, discussing about the total mixed duration, there are some issues that, uh, that uh, must be taken into account. First of all, the wide variability resulting from the variability in the field. 
that um, results in variability on the ingredients and subsequently it affects the duration both in, uh, during the mixing phase and the administering phase. To counteract this, there are some automatic non-destructive and real-time analysis systems and IR sensors that may control the variability and help in adjusting the doses of the racin of the, of the racin components. And the, such systems may be load. Here we can see an example on the front on the on the loading uh, device of the mixing wagon and uh, to perform online analysis. But such systems may help also in uh, forecasting the variability when mounted on bailing machines and forest surfaces, as you can see here. There is also uh, the fact that uh, a frequency approach of the ration in, uh, induces an increase in trimeter ingestion of uh, cation because uh, there is a stimulus resulting from the passage of the devices. And uh, uh, this activity also counteracts the common uh, food sorting uh, activity that cows perform when are, they are looking for the most palatable component of the ration. However, when the ration, the total mixed duration is prepared, there may be some um, failings of an involuntary, which uh, uh, due, for example, for contingent situation that may lead to uh, wrong mixing times and lead to feed inefficiencies. On the other side, on the other side, the market currently is starting providing for optical systems uh, that mounted on the um, mixing wagon can help uh, the farmer to adjust the mixing time in order to have the proper fiber length of the ration. So we are thinking, uh, speaking about the uh, mixing, the preparation of the total mixed duration. We can see that it uh, has been undergoing a, a huge um, evolution from the first test in laboratory conditions uh, through the, the introduction of electronic scales uh, that uh, helped in, um, prepare, in adjusting the adequacy of the ration, uh, of the world ration. And now there is uh, there are the, mo the most uh, recent innovation in uh, field administration, in the design of the, on the, of the wagons, and even now in the field collection devices. We will see it later. And uh, the automatic fixing systems are currently uh, exploding in the world. These, uh, are, these uh, data are not uh, updated. However, we can see that uh, there, um, uh, the increase for, uh, from 2012 and 2015 is significant. Even though in our country, the first automatic fixing system uh, has been installed only in um, 2013. Electronic and automation play a key role uh, in uh, feed, uh, in feed administering and preparation because uh, they are valuable um, uh, uh, hints to uh, reduce the risk of human error. In particular, because they allow the respect of the, quant the quantity control, the quality estimation, and to set the proper fiber length. When we uh, introduce uh, an automatic feeding administering system, we move to a complete different uh, ingestion behavior of the animals. Because if we consider that uh, with conventional unifix administration, uh, following the first uh, administration in the mo in morning, after three hours, almost one third of the ration has been ingested by the animals. We can see that uh, this curve is uh, replicated many times in the, in the day when we uh, talk about uh, automatic feed, um, unifix administration. And this multiple days distribution may be beneficial for the, anim for the animals. The variable technologies uh, that uh, in the orthofit project uh, we studied move from the easy to difficult and from simple to complex. We, this is the state of the art, the total mixed wagon uh, uh, trialed by a tractor. And after the um, feed delivery, there is uh, there are uh, the rapprochement. There is the rapprochement uh, carried out by the man uh, during the day. This can be substituted by partially automated system, which may uh, lean on drum uh, reapproachers or screw 
uh, pushing system that uh, continuously and automatically uh, reapproach the feed uh, to the major. However, automated feed systems uh, are uh, in a wide variability that allows such devices to be installed in many farming situations. The, we can roughly divide them into three types uh, from the first the first simple the most simple the type one which uh, acts on the mixing of the compound and the feed administration the type two which um, uh, automatically storages the carotin components uh, loads the wagon and provides for mixing and administering and for type three the future which uh, also provides for ratin component collection no matter how complex these automatic feasting systems are, we can, um, we can describe them as made by two main components, the kitchen on the left and the feeders on the right. The kitchen is uh, what which is called the so-called kitchen is a, a wide covered environment uh, close to the barn where the components of the ration are stored. These can be very simple or more um, automated when uh, it is made by um, automatic loading bins. The feeders uh, are made, uh, the, it can be uh, some systems uh, solutions, for example, belts or wagons, which uh, in, um, according to the installation uh, specificity may also uh, act as a, mixing, as a mixing device. And usually these travels from the kitchen to provide the feed to the animals. Here you can see how these feeders may be designed. The simple one on the left is a conveyor belt feeder. So we have the, the, the kitchen, uh, probably above uh, the barn, and the, the belt provides for the distribution of the feed to the animals. We can have uh, also some suspended feeders with racers suspended uh, that uh, are in the middle, and that provide for they can provide both for mixing and administering of the ration. Rail guided, which where the weight of the uh, wagon is uh, supported by wheels, and they follow a path thanks to the to a rail that uh, can also provide them the electric power they require. And uh, the, the most complex one are the self propelled mix mixing wagon, which uh, are uh, which follow specific paths and that uh, are electrically moved. When we consider type one automatic feeding systems, these, uh, the advantage of uh, such systems, uh, we found that uh, uh, is that their feasibility to, uh, for example, alpine areas and uh, mountain areas. Here we, here we can see a location, uh, a barn in the Alps. We can see that the upper part is the kitchen. And here, how is it, how it is, it was organized. We have uh, the storage and the, uh, and the with the right guided crane, the farmer uh, puts the ingredients through this oil to the mixer, which is in an intermediate position of the barn. And uh, it delivers the uh, mixed ration to the uh, rail guided, uh, suspend, rail suspended uh, wagon, which now you can see it is loaded. And the wagon provides for both the ration administering and the ration reapproaching to the manager. Type 2 automatic feeding systems, as I told you before, provide for ration component storage. The, auto, the loading of the wagon is automatic. There is the mixing of the components and the feed administration automatically performed. Usually, mm, these systems are uh, in more articulated uh, farms, and we can see that the building sometimes is a non-purpose built building where there is a, um, a storage area and a loading area. Here, the storage area and the loading area um, coincide, uh, and uh, the um, the beams may be loaded thanks to uh, forklifts. In the, when the, the, the ration uh, is prepared, then the 
load. The wagon is loaded and after loading there is the mixing time and, the, and then the um, uh, automatic feeding system provides for a rest and administering to the animal. Here you can see the self-propelled and the rail guided one. Type 3 automatic feeding systems are on the, uh, we can see we are on the edge. <laughs> yeah, and up to now there are uh, systems that are uh, designed to autom autonomously provide for rats and compact load, transport, uh, chop, mixing and distribution. And they can take advantage of the GPS, radar or laser technology to move automatically within the farm. These are some examples taken from the um, study of a colleague of us, Dr. Lazzari, and uh, the, the, some models uh, uh, based on an automatic uh, wagon, a propellant wagon that is filled by an um, automatic distillator connect, connected to each horizontal silo on the farm. These installations are quite um, we, we are waiting for uh, some installation to, uh, to be, uh, in order to, to see and study the functioning. In case of meat production, which is the advantage that these devices have, is their um, adaptability. Usually the feeding alley in a, um, in a meat production site is uh, not uniform. We have uh, animals housed in different boxes and uh, such animals belong to different fattening stages. Uh, they may have also different uh, health conditions. And uh, we can take uh, everything into account in uh, programming the distribution so that each uh, breed receives the, uh, the more adequate uh, um, ration. Uh, during the project, uh, uh, this uh, um, peculiarity of the automatic feeding systems is turned out by the uh, farmer's impressions, in particular the feeding frequency that uh, uh, ranged from, from, from 10 times a day. So if you remember the, uh, the chart I saw before, this is quite uh, an, an, an improvement in, uh, compared to the uh, single administering. What uh, uh, farmers uh, recorded is an average uh, increase in meat production of 130, 150 uh, grams per day per animal. The leftovers are significantly reduced and uh, at the same time the energy costs. The installation cost, and this is in line with the main expectation of the uh, farmers, is quite a uh, is quite a wide range, however, it is assessed between 400 and 1,200 euros per animal at varying of the, of course, of the, of the size, the uh, specificity. The uh, farmers interviewed uh, are um, in a great majority favorable to uh, uh, purchase um, an automatic physician system and the motivation behind this, this uh, their choice uh, is uh, the increased animal welfare, the animal performance and the improved quality of the racing. Meaning um, then there is the reduced competition between the uh, moderate red animals and uh, better adequacy of the racing that leads also to uh, better feed um, transformation. So, uh, these, uh, the three types of automatic feed systems I show, mainly all have a wide adaptability. They all resulted in improving the quality of the work and allow for regular distribution, which means that uh, um, the, the time once, once it was required to provide for feed administration, now can be uh, used to uh, add, uh, better observe the animals and to uh, perform other um, farming uh, operations. In particular, they allow for uh, the flexibility, increase a little bit flexibility of the working time for, of, the, of the farmers. Uh, in uh, our project, this uh, online survey is still ongoing and I am very glad to welcome all of you 
to take part to it, uh, you uh, should uh, visit the uh, Out of It project and uh, uh, choose the online survey on the top um, of the van. And uh, in the top right corner of the, uh, of the form, you uh, switch from Italian to English to provide uh, your, um, your answers. To me, it's, um, I thank you very much for your kind attention. I'm here and I'm available to any question that may arise. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Massimo. That's great to hear from you. Uh, I'd now like to pass over to Amra Motta. Thank you, Mimi. So, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, uh, thank you for what we are uh, organizer for inviting us uh, to speak. I introduce myself. My name is Ambra Motta and I'm a researcher at the CRPA, uh, which stands for Research Center on Animal Production and it plays in Reggio Emilia. Unfortunately, due to unforeseen problem, I have to leave the webinar after my presentation, but if you have some question, please send me an email you find it on the last slide of my presentation and I'll answer you as soon as possible. Sorry. Uh, today I will show you a short presentation about automatic feeding system known by the acronym AFS and how to introduce these systems in dairy and beef cattle farms. Okay, but before talking about this, I would like to give you a brief introduction about technological innovation and automation. Uh, the technological development in animal husbandry and in particular the introduction of uh, automatic systems such as automatic feeding system in the last uh, 40 years brought uh, on one hand uh, the, the improvement on animal, of animal production and quality of work. And I would like to emphasize this aspect because in the last years, uh, the work of the farmer has changed. As a matter of fact, farmers has a key role in, uh, in feeding uh, that doesn't end uh, um, with the preparation and the distribution of the unifit, but it extends uh, to the management of the uh, feed barriers uh, over 24 hours. So the workload is not indifferent and can reach several hours. Thanks to this system, uh, farmer can reduce or uh, eliminate tiring and dangerous activities. But, on the other hand, it led to an increase in energy consumption in terms of electric energy and thermal energy. Specifically, uh, technological innovation acted on the technological evolution, first of all, uh, in animal husbandry fields. We can look, to, for example, at the improvement of uh, structures uh, performance levels, the improvement of the housing system quality and the introduction of precision livestock farming, PLF. Secondly, on farm sustainability uh, in terms of uh, rational use of resources, energetic saving and also in animal welfare. And last but not least, the improvement of working condition as I told you uh, before. Now, talking about cost, feeding is the most relevant aspect of the cost production, the production cost in, uh, in a farm. In fact, uh, we have to consider not only the purchase and production costs of forage, animal feed and the integrator, but also the facility and the labor cost we need for the preparation and distribution of the unifeed. So it's very, uh, it's a relevant, relevant aspect in a farm. As you can see here, we have uh, uh, some pictures of uh, different uh, possible uh, types of uh, automatic, uh, automatic feeding systems. In the first pictures, group of pictures, uh, we have the lady model. The second one is Atwin model. Uh, the third represents the triolet model and the last, the fourth and the last pictures represents uh, the Wassenbauer model. 
The choice of uh, AFS in our farms depends on several factors uh, that we'll discuss in uh, the last in uh, the next uh, slide. But in order to obtain a functional and a correct design of a system, but also in some cases of the stable, uh, expert and rural construction experts uh, have to consider all the elements that constitute the stable, such as structures, layout, environment, facility, equipment, and something like this. These elements uh, have to work together in order to achieve an improvement in animal welfare, health, and productivity, and income for farmers as well. So, in few words, uh, um, the experts must have a holistic vision of the farm and of the design of the farm. But if we want to introduce an AFS in our farms, we have to take into account the interaction between the design, the structure of the existing stable or the one we are going to build with the new system, in this case, with the automatic feeding system. So, what are uh, the technical and essential elements uh, to consider? First of all, the placement of the kitchen. The kitchen is this place uh, where the feed is stored, mixed and prepared. But in particular, its placement uh, in relation to the stables. So, uh, how far is my kitchen from the stable, so from the building where the cows, where the beef cattle are. Then we have to pay attention to the wagon track. It's necessary to reduce, to decrease that time by reducing the time spent to reach the feeding barriers. This way, the wagon can distribute more times a day and work for several hours a day. Another aspect, another important aspect, is the possibility to reduce the width of the tractor feed passage or the foraging lane, uh, especially if you are building a new stables or if we are making a restoration. For example, if the farmer uh, make a restoration, the farmer could allocate part of the um, foraging lane uh, to other uses, for example, for hay storage. We have also to consider the structural aspect, particularly for the types which have a monorail track. In this case, we have to consider the strength and the endurance of the main building structures, so the, um, the structure of the farm, of the stables. Last but not least, the presence of ground-level disparity, or slope. Above all, if we would like to install a system that travels on wheels. In the next slides, I'll show you some schemes uh, designed by us at CRPA for the AutoFeed project, which will make you understand how many solutions we can find on the market. Uh, the image on the slide represents a loose housing uh, stable. The red part uh, are the feeding area, the green one are, ones are the resting area, and uh, while the pink ones are the milking area. Uh, the slides show a simple uh, system with an uh, uh, electric stationary wagon here, the, into which the farmer puts the ingredients, the raw materials. This wagon mixes the unifeed, which is, uh, when it's ready, it's poured into a self-propelled wagon that uh, can be wheels on wheels or uh, on a monorail. And then uh, this self-propelled wagon distributes the uh, feed, then, the unifeed to animals. Uh, the red lines you can see on slides represent the wagon truck. There is, uh, an, uh, this is uh, another scheme, uh, is similar to the first one, but uh, the way the ingredients, the raw materials are stored changes. 
In this case, this, uh, it's not the farmer who puts the ingredients, the ingredients into the wagon, but they are already stored in the kitchen, in particular in bunkers. The bunkers are a sort of containers in which there is a platform. This is bunkers. These are, sorry, bunkers. Uh, in these bunkers, there are a platform that moves, that advances and pulls a certain quantity of silage of hay of the selected ingredient according to the feed ration into the self propel wagon. The self propel wagon mixes and then distributes the uh, unifeed to, uh, to animals. Another example of a scheme with an AFS uh, involves a ground level storage and uh, the ground level storage divided into several spaces. Uh, the number of the spaces depends on the ingredients of, uh, you need uh, the, for, uh, for feed uh, ration. In these spaces, the raw materials and the ingredients is stored, are stored. There is then a bridge crane that moves in all direction and a suspended claw, you can see there, uh, a suspended claw uh, that takes, that moves, uh, sorry, uh, along uh, the bridge crane. The claw takes uh, the raw materials, the ingredients, to the, uh, according to the feed ration, and brings it onto the self propelled wagon. The self propelled wagon then mixes and then distributes, uh, distributes the, the unifeed to animals. For these types of uh, for this type of AFS, it's necessary to provide a safety system because, uh, uh, for example, a protective net has the decal um, takes the feed ingredients, uh, for example, silage, hay, uh, with great force and could be dangerous for animals uh, and for people, for example, for a child or for a dog. Another solution and another scheme uh, involves uh, bunkers and a conveyor's belt. Uh, in, this, uh, in this case, the conveyor, belt, the conveyor belt takes the ingredients from the bunker to the stationary uh, wagon mixer here. The stationary mix mixes the unifit. When the unifit is ready, it is poured onto another uh, conveyor belt that distributes the unifeed. Uh, thanks to this system, it is possible to reduce the uh, foraging, uh, foraging uh, lane. But uh, it's important to remember that if something doesn't work, uh, for example, if uh, um, yes, if something doesn't work, the farmer couldn't uh, can't enter uh, the uh, the stables with the tractor because uh, it's uh, smaller than the other. The foraging lane is smaller than the other. Last, uh, last example, uh, as you can see, the reason to the milking area because uh, this system, this scheme is for beef cattle farm. Uh, in this case, we have uh, uh, a ground level storage, as you can see, uh, as a uh, you can you can um, you you saw in uh, the scheme three, uh, but in this uh, in this case, uh, but instead of uh, the bridge crane and the cloud, there is a conveyor belt where a cutter passes. The cutter cut uh, a certain quantity of ingredient of uh, the selected ingredient of raw materials according to the feed ration and drop it uh, and drops it into onto a um, a conveyor belt the, then the conveyor belt uh, takes the feed to the wagon that mixes and distributes the unifeed In addition to the structural building aspect, the economical aspect plays an important role. Uh, 
the economical assessment uh, must uh, consider first of all the purchase and the installation cost of uh, the uh, IFS the cost of construction of the kitchen or the restoration of a stable to be used as a kitchen, the calculation of uh, amortization rate, maintenance and insurance cost, the labor and cost energy, especially electric energy, and uh, the estimated value of possible benefits resulting uh, from the installation of uh, AFS. Then uh, the cost of the alternative construction site uh, made by the structure, the pulled mixer, vegan and feed pushing. Uh, in the auto feed project, we are conducting uh, some economic evaluation to assess the profitability of uh, the investment plan. So, uh, in order to conclude my presentation, uh, it's important to say that IFS are very evolved technology that can represent an important innovation in dairy cows and beef cattle farming. Uh, the IFS installation has to integrate with farming structure with modalities that can change from new structure or restoration from small to big farms. And also it's important to underline the fact that uh, a farmer could uh, can uh, produce by itself, uh, by itself, uh, electric energy thanks to photovoltaic system. The winning aspect, as a matter of fact, why the environmental impact point of view is exactly the passage from the consumption of thermal energy to the consumption of self-provided electric energy. Thanks uh, for uh, your attention and uh, as I told you before, if uh, you have uh, some questions, please uh, Send me an email, you can find it at a.motta at crpa.it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambro. It was, so I, I pass over to you now, Aldo. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, good uh, evening, everyone. My name is Aldo Calcante, and I am an associate professor of farm machinery and zootechnical plants at uh, the Department of uh, Agricultural and Environmental Sciences at the University of Milan. And my presentation is called uh, Energy Aspects as Indicators of Sustainability. Well, uh, in uh, dairy farm, uh, or in cattle farm, 50 to 60 percent of total operating costs derive from animal feeding and uh, the related work. The adoption of strategies to optimize costs uh, is a determining factor to remain on the market and obtaining uh, wider margins. And for this purpose, uh, the automation of uh, the activities related to the animal feeding can play a very important role. And uh, until now, uh, automation in this sector was essentially limited to concentrate feeders, uh, milking parlor feeders, and the calf feeders. Uh, more recently, starting from uh, 2000, automatic feeding systems have been developed for preparation and distribution of total mixed duration. And nowadays, there are about 20 manufacturers of automatic feeding systems, and more than uh, 1,500 systems are used worldwide. What are the main drivers uh, for the adoption of an AFS by farmers? Well, firstly, by the high incidence of feeding operations uh, on the total working time and the related necessity of life. Uh, for second, the growing expectation regards to animal performances related with their alimentation and uh, in order to optimize the feed efficiency. And uh, at, at uh, least the possibility to distribute the total mixed duration uh, more frequently. Uh, 10, 50 times, 15 times per day against one or two times uh, by using the conventional mixer. Uh, what are the, the typology of AFS? Briefly, uh, the AFS can be uh, classified uh, as uh, individual fixed systems, uh, as uh, group fixed systems, mobile systems with the distributor wagon, mobile systems with mixer and distributor wagon, and self-propelled systems. In this case, there are two typologies on the market. 
the first uh, one uh, is uh, uh, powered uh, by using uh, internal combustion engines uh, fueled by uh, gasoline or uh, more frequently diesel. And in second case, uh, little mixer wagons uh, powered by electrical energy. And uh, in Northern Italy in 2010, uh, there wasn't uh, any AFS, but uh, only 10 uh, years uh, after, the system amount about uh, 50. So there is a slow but constant increase in the adoption of this technology, also in Italy. And uh, from the energetic consumption point of view, uh, it's um, interesting to observe that a group, a group of fixed systems, a distributor wagon, mixer and distributor, distributor wagon, and electric self-propelled mixer wagon, uh, every uh, all uh, powered by electrical energy, uh, and uh, shows uh, show the uh, low consumption, low values of consumption, consumption from 20 to uh, 32, about uh, kilowatt hour per day. Uh, whilst the diesel self-propelled uh, mixer wagon uh, has a very high consumption, uh, about 570 kilowatt hour per day, due to the lower efficiency of the internal combustion engine with respect to the electrical engine. And uh, I want to show two uh, case studies observed in Northern Italy. One related to farm one, a big farm with uh, 420 cows and the two automatic feeding systems. And uh, farm two, uh, more uh, common in Northern Italy, uh, with uh, 120 cows and only one AF. From, uh, well, the, for the farm one, uh, the first analysis was about the energy monitoring and the cost analysis. And uh, we carried out in this farm two months of measurement, uh, measurement of what uh, total energy consumption of the automatic feeding system by using a monitoring system on web platform. In this way, it was possible to uh, obtain uh, only the consumption related to the AF. And uh, after uh, this monitoring, uh, we carried out the comparison between the costs necessary to prepare and distribute the total mix uh, ration using the automatic feeding system uh, in comparison to the conventional system uh, previously present in the form. The conventional feeding system consists consist in uh, 30 cube meters uh, double auger vertical mixer wagon coupled to a 110 kilowatt engine power for wheel drive tractor and the total mixed uh, ration uh, for a day was equal about uh, 19,000 uh, kilograms and uh, tractor and mixer wagon uh, worked for seven uh, hours per day, per day and the fuel consumption was about one, uh, 117 kilograms of diesel per day. And, uh, to carry out the cost analysis, uh, we applied uh, the classical uh, ASABE EP497.3 methodology, classical uh, system, classical methodology that allows to estimate the mechanization cost. In this way, it's possible to evaluate the ownership cost, uh, like equipment, depreciation, interest of investment, taxes, taxes, insurance, housing of the machine, and the operating or running costs, uh, repair and maintenance, lubricant oils, fuel consumption, labor, in order to obtain uh, the hourly cost uh, for, uh, this, uh, for uh, one particular technology. And uh, uh, to calculate the cost, uh, we referred to values reported in this part of the slide, uh, are values uh, before uh, the, the Russian Ukraine war. Now, uh, I think that these values are high. Well, uh, as a result, uh, from the uh, energy consumption point of view, we obtained a very, very different, uh, different absorption, absorption between AFS and CFS. Uh, the value obtained for AFS is very, very low in comparison to the conventional system. 
with a 97% uh, saving of energy. And, uh, about the cost, uh, also in this case, it's possible to observe uh, 33% uh, of saving uh, with the uh, 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 cost per day of about 200 of, uh, euros against uh, 300 euros for the conventional feeding system. This taking into account uh, the uh, investment that in the second case, in the first case, for the APS, is uh, 40% higher in comparison to the conventional feeding systems. Uh, why this uh, advantage? Well, uh, this is due to the high energy savings uh, and the redu reduction of the labor cost achievable with the adoption of uh, an automatic feeding system in comparison to a conventional feeding system. For the farm too, we carried out uh, energy measurement uh, by using uh, an energy analyzer with the internal battery directly connected into the, uh, at the electrical panel of the farm. In this way, we was able to calculate the energy consumption and also in this case, in this uh, farm it's absolutely interesting because uh, with the CFS the energy consumption per day was uh, 347 kilowatt per hour against uh, about 30, 30 kilowatt per hour uh, related to the AFS with 91.6% uh, of, uh, of saving in energy and 25% uh, saving in cost. So also in this case uh, we had the interesting results. In conclusion, it's possible to, uh, to say that the energy consumption of automatic feeding system is much smaller compared to conventional system based on mix level. And uh, there's another particular very important data collected and formatted for farming, farming information system, only uh, obviously for uh, AFS, are a precious help for the herd management. This is a very important aspect uh, for and uh, last but not the least, the adoption of uh, an IFS can increase the competitiveness of, of, uh, of farm, dairy and beef farms, also for uh, medium small uh, dimensions farm. But uh, this is very important also from a sustainability point of view, especially uh, if the electrical energy is uh, directly produced uh, in the farm by using photovoltaic cells and or Thank you very much for uh, your kind attention. Thank you very much, Aldo. We have one question in um, already that I can see. So I'll, I'll just put it to, to both uh, Aldo and, and Massimo. From your experience, how many TMR distributions per day are uh, is the best amount? It's a good question. <laughs> That's a really good one. <laughs> In my, op my opinion, it depends uh, from the typology of the farm, with the builds, uh, the place, uh, the place uh, in, uh, on the hill, uh, in mountain, uh, on plain. And it's very difficult to, to, to respond to this uh, uh, question. I think uh, every farm needs uh, a proper uh, system, automatic feeding system. In my opinion, I, think, I agree. I agree with Aldo. It, uh, we know agriculture is, uh, there is a lot of variability, so it depends on the barn, it depends on the organization. It depends also on the ingredients, because uh, there, there may be some conditions uh, where ingredients uh, should be uh, distributed more frequently. In other, in other situations, we can reduce the number of uh, feed administrations. However, I think that uh, um, another issue that should be taken into account uh, that uh, was pointed out in some previous literature is that the number of uh, distribution should not alter also the laying behavior of the cows. So um, everything is left uh, to farmer sensitivity as always because uh, he knows the herd, he knows the barn, he knows what else. Uh, the, 
more than deciding a, a fixed number which represents the best option i think that uh, this would result from uh, uh, preliminary co considerations considering the holistic systems where the animals are bred thank you very much both of you for answering that um you say not not an easy question to answer there okay i, I don't see any more questions coming in at the moment so I'd just like to say thank you to all of our speakers for today, uh, Massimo, Ambra and Aldo. Um, it was a real pleasure to have you join Bovine for, uh, for this webinar today. Uh, and hopefully there'll be potential for us to collaborate again in the future. So thank you very much for your time um, and, and your expertise on this, this webinar today. Thank you, Mimi. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would thank also like to thank everybody um, in attendance today. Um, and please keep an eye out on social media as well as our website for more information about future webinars. We do have three more coming up um, across the next two months, so please do keep an eye out for those. Um, and I'd also like to invite you all to access the good practices and research innovations that are being identified by the Bovine Project on the Bovine Knowledge Hub. This is an open access site. Um, so all are welcome to access it and it's completely free uh, and open to, to access. So um, please do take a look at the Knowledge Hub. Thank you very much again to everyone uh, that's attended and to all of our, our speakers and wishing you all a, a lovely evening. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank take you. Care. Bye.